Welcome back, everyone. It's December 11th, 1941. We're here with another episode of Alphabet Command, our co-op game, uh, versus uh, Guktani playing as the Japanese. On the Allied side, of course, you have myself, Paradigm Blue, and Evoken. Uh, it's been a rough few days for us uh, as the Allies. Uh, Gektini is proving himself a very experienced and very skillful uh, Japanese player. He's inflicted a lot of losses on us so far, uh, not the uh, least being uh, his invasion of the island of Hawaii, uh, plus his uh, uh, devastating first turn strikes and his follow-up with his submarine game, which is very, very strong. I counted 20 Japanese submarines just in an 8 hex radius around um, the uh, uh, port of Oosthaven. Uh, here we have a ASW attack near Lehana. We see these fleeing ships of uh, Evokens as they try to get away from the chasing submarines and chasing surface task forces that are pursuing them. Um, but we do manage to put a couple depth charges into the Japanese I-6. You can see all of these submarines here. Looks like he encounters some more of our ships. He misses with the I-7 north of Laihana. Laihana, of course, being uh, on Maui, I believe. Unfortunately, it looks like one of our cargo ships is intercepted. And slips to the bottom. One of these fleeing ships that's trying to get away from Hong Kong. Near Iba, a couple PT, PT boats tangle with... Uh, Japanese uh, battleship force. Uh, and manage to slip in some PT boats to this uh, uh, invasion TF. Does not look like they're able to land any hits. They do land a couple shell hits, but uh, very small caliber guns in those PT boats. Unless they sink a torpedo into a ship, it's not going to do much damage. Well, naval action. Again, one of our ships tries to slip away, and it's going to get easily dispatched as well from these patrolling uh, Japanese cruisers and destroyers that aren't letting anything escape here from uh, our area. Um, this is actually one of our subs. Uh, good job to uh, one of the older United States submarines, one of the Japanese, excuse me, United States S-boats, putting torp two torpedoes into an AP. It's a, uh, a good hit. Um, these older uh, S-boats do not use the unreliable Mark 14 torpedo, which was infamous, of course, during the actual war for its very, very high dud rate. The uh, earlier boats used a smaller, older torpedo that was much more reliable. And uh, one of those makes that connection near Vigon. So good job to you, Vulcan, for vectoring those older submarines onto those forces. And it sounds like that ship actually sinks. It's a great job. The Gudgeon, however, is plagued with the Mark 14s and does not connect, even though it launches four of those torpedoes. Probably some of those misses were because of those duds. Japanese I-23 tries to put a torpedo in the DM Tracy, but misses. And we're on to the air night phase. It's just going to be a lot of naval search here. Finding these submarines, of course, at night. Spots the enemy carriers at Guantan. Looks like uh, Avokin is doing some night bombing. I'm doing some night bombing as well at uh, Kuantan. 
and it's successful. We destroy two planes on the ground. Not a huge uh, a success, but I'll take what we can get. Our Hudsons are not as su successful. And this Blenheim group doesn't look like it does anything either. Oh, the New Orleans can't get a break, and she's going to go down. Torpedo hit heavy damage. I think she already took Torpedo. Yeah, and that's another heavy cruiser down. Yikes. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Um, we do have Invasion of Guam going on, supported by some heavy cruisers. Uh, lots of Japanese casualties, that's to be expected. But only two hits on this cruiser. Looks like he's using mostly combat ships to offload here. I think that's going to wrap up our night phases. We're on to the day phases, so the day naval phase first. More combat at Guam as more troops offload, and a decent amount are destroyed, but no damage to the ships really, just a, a hit on that destroyer. Um, ASW attack near Oosthaven, we put one hit on the I-86. Somehow the uh, AKL bust is missed uh, in this strait uh, between uh, Billiton and Banka Island. These DMSs are doing a great job in uh, going after these Japanese submarines. Some more ASW work there in the uh, fleeing convoy. And we do our own ASW work uh, near Tobali, here in the Java Sea, but don't make contact with any of the uh, with depth charges. This AK is not so lucky as the I-80 puts a torpedo in her. She was unescorted, that was a risk, um, but it is a, only an AKL, so it's not that big of a deal. Ooh, but these AKLs are also going to get beat up fleeing from the Philippines. They run into this battle cruiser for task force led by the BC Yoshino. Both of them go down. Looks like a cruiser force on either side here. Ours is heavily damaged though, uh, going after their force. Honolulu leads it up, escorted by the Chu, the Jarvis, and the Schley. Uh, on the other side we have the uh, Akum, uh, Abukama? Abukuma, I believe. Uh, Jarvis takes a hit e early, goes down, uh, looks to be mostly one-sided. We're not really landing any hits on these Japanese ships to speak of. Yeah, really one-sided. Um, Jarvis goes down and sunk. Nine shell hits on the Honolulu. We only land three hits on those Japanese ships. Really disappointing performance from the American Navy there. And we're going to be on to the uh, morning air phase. We do have carriers in the Celebi Sea right now. We're going to have to see what they do. Lots of naval search going on. Uh, a lot of that naval search around that fleeing group probably tells me that he has float plane equipped subs in that area, keeping tabs on those uh, USN ships fleeing Hawaii. We have our own naval search going on. Uh, we sweep this hex of uh, a uh kind of southeast of Rahang. He has a unit there. It is clear terrain. We're going to try to do some bombing there today if we can. I had hoped to bomb these units as well when they were in this hex, but they moved out of it. And we had bad weather over Rangoon and couldn't launch our strikes over the past few days. We also do some sweeping over Sama. Breakus go against some Oscars. 
looks like two Oscars go down compared to one Bragu 697. However, um, I saw a couple more explosions, so it's possible that we lost more than that in that sweep. We're going to go after that airfield today. More sweeps. Our MS 14s doing good work, it looks like. Yeah, taking out three Oscars while only losing one MS 410. Betty's go after some of our fleeing ships. AP Placer takes a torpedo. She's not going to survive that. There will be follow up strikes, I'm sure, and she'll go down. Really, as an Allied player, you pretty much have to write off anything that starts out at Hong Kong or Quang Chowan. Catalina's put a torpedo in the cruiser uh, Furutaka, probably flying from Cebu when there's a, where there's an air command to supply those torpedoes. Great work by my partner Evoken using those Catalina's uh, and those or tor torpedoes that they can carry to full effect. Really good work there. Little follow up with our planes. Not going to be as effective there, and they all miss sadly. Doesn't help that they go after the battle cruiser, which is the toughest target there. Um, that's one thing about um, the air model in the game. The your planes will go after the biggest target, which is usually a good thing. But when you don't have the greatest planes with the greatest payloads, sometimes you wish they would go after lower value targets. But they have more of a chance of hitting and destroying. But that's the game. Here's that bombing I was talking about. And 57 casualties, decent damage there to those troops trying to move uh, to uh, Rohang and then probably on to Rangoon. We can see he also has troops at uh, Chiang Mai, which will be headed to Pegu, I'm sure. They resent, present a bigger problem than the ones here because they're in this rough terrain up here that's very tough to bomb in. More Blindheims come in, this time doing only very light casualties. More sweeping here over Sama. This time we lose a BR-697 to no gain. My MS-14s though do good work, taking out four of those Oscars over Sama. And my last MS-410 group comes in, destroying an Oscar. Let's see if I actually have a bombing run come through yet or not. My bombers may not want to uh, fly since uh, there was so much cap over the hex at the beginning of the turn. Warhawks at Monado are trying to protect uh, Evoken shipping uh, here but they're going to have to deal with these Zeros, and the Zeros handle those Warhawks, sadly, and the uh, uh, Kates get through, sinking two AKLs. Have second strike, this time bigger, and those Warhawks are just brushed aside by those uh, uh, carrier fighters, and uh, all those AKLs are sunk. Kates come in, this time with no cap, but they miss this time. On to the PM phase, we lose a destroyer, probably damaged in that uh, cruiser combat earlier in the turn. Lots of spotting going on. We're on to the strike phase. A uh, smaller attack goes in on Pearl Harbor. Evoken has moved all of his planes out, and so no, no cap rises to the occasion. And two more battleships are destroyed uh, in the charnel house that is the Pearl Harbor uh, port.
Doing a little more bombing here at Groot Natona. I just really want to slow this construction down and delay that airbase, but we're not doing a lot of damage there. Yeah. Not sure why we're not making better connections, probably because of this heavy rain, but still 8,000 feet, I should be planting more bombs on these troops. It is jungle terrain, though, that doesn't help us. Uh... Oh, nice work with uh, um, the uh, Dornier here, flying probably from uh, uh, Ambon, I would guess. No, from just from Sarong. Puts uh, three hits in this AKL and sinks it. Turniers go after the Oshino and get pretty messed up, damaged, and destroyed by Flak. Um, yeah. Go after AKL's guy or, or that damaged cruiser. Don't go after a battle cruiser. Another uh, shipping strike here. And more AKL's are destroyed. This time, uh, the Warhawks do take down a Kate, though. Better AKs now are taken out by uh, well, a large group of them here, destroyed by uh, uh, those Kates. I'm disappointed that uh, our uh, B-33 9Ds at Samarenda and Pali Pakpan did not sortie uh, and try to intercept, but they are a ways away from our air bases. PG Telsa, Gertrude Kellogg, both are sunk by Kates. This carrier group just wreaking kind of a ring of devastation around it. It's always interesting playing as allies early game because you feel so overwhelmed by the power of the Japanese, even more so in Focus Pacific, where they have such a large uh, uh, array of forces to uh, bring to bear. Uh, Taney uh, gets involved with the I-23. Taney, uh, by the way, one of my favorite ships of the war. Um, I'll be very sad if it gets if it gets lost. It's a uh, actually a Coast Guard ship that served with distinction throughout the uh, uh, throughout World War II. Lose more ships there and more landing here at Guam. Not as much sub action in the Dutch East Indies, which is nice for us. Didn't lose too much more there. And he's attacking at Hong Kong, just bombarding this time. As you can see, I've moved most of my forces out of the Hex already. They are now safely at Quang Chowan. Um, and then they are going to flee. Um, and they'll head to Burma, where they're going to support my efforts there. And that looks like it for the turn. So, um, pretty painful uh, south of the Philippines. Uh, painful in that, that cruiser battle that uh, Avokin and Guktani had north of the Hawaiian Islands was so one-sided. Um, but we had some okay success um, in the air uh, at Sama, there south of Quang Chowan. Though uh, south of the Philippine Islands, those carriers uh, just tore through that P-40 cap-like tissue paper, and that's a matter of both planes, the Zeros are a better plane than those P-40s, and experience. Those carrier pilots, Japanese carrier pilots, are just so much more experienced than anything the Allies have to offer at this point of the, point of the game. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the turn, and we'll see you in the Discord. Take care, everyone.